Harp on Sports, The Bar, Podcast, Media, Audio, and Radio Network. Wow. What do we have in store for you on this edition of the program? A little NFL nuptials. NFL season is here. Regular season is here. Go through and look at this. We've been pretty good. Not 100%, of course not, over the course of the last few years, but we've been pretty close. Pretty close. Last year, had the Rams winning the Super Bowl over the Titans. Didn't get the AFC, got the NFC right. Year before, we had the Packers beating the Chiefs. Got the AFC right, but not the NFC. What do we have in store for you this year? Including a brand new NFL MVP, a brand new Defensive Player of the Year. We're going to get to that coming up here momentarily. Also, Big 12, big ups. Commissioner saying that they are looking west when it comes to expansion. All right. You've heard some people dabble. Now he's giving you directions. What does this mean? This starts to eliminate teams. USF starts to eliminate teams east. Starts to eliminate the schools like Memphis. Who does it bring into the fold? We're going to look at that. And the Yank rank, the Yank rank and file, that is. Aaron Judge on pace now. 65 home runs. Almost 140 RBI. Hit over 300. Where does that rank amongst all-time great or the all-time great single seasons? It's just a Yankee. May surprise you. So look at that as well. Again, Harp on Sports, the bar podcast, media, audio, and radio network. At Harp on Sports Twitter. At Harp on Sports Instagram. Harp on Sports, the bar. Auditory route. Buzzsprout, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Harp on Sports, the Facebook page. Harp on Sports, the bar, the YouTube channel. And of course, HarpOnSports.com. Okay. Where do we get? NFL nuptials. I don't go through these like a win-loss, win-loss. Don't do that. I tell you who's going to make the playoffs in each division. I'm not going to do records. They're going to go 5-11 and 11 because when it's all said and done, you've got teams that are winning games twice. No, 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 no. you got teams that, oh, the Saints are winning. And then, no, actually the Bucks are winning. No, 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 I'm doing that. Just overall, who's going to win each division? And I, I'll throw some records out there for you when it comes to each division. Sure, I'll meet you halfway when it comes to that. Let's start off with this first. I'm going to start off with the NFC East. Sticking with the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are 11 and 6, 10 and 7. They win this division. Commanders, Eagles, Giants. Again, it's lack of better options. I know that they lost a lot, but they still got the big man back at quarterback. Ezekiel is still running the ball. They still have a good offensive line. Cowboys win this division going 10 and 7. NFC North, Packers win this thing. I don't see the Bears, the Lions, or the Vikings competing. The Vikings may make a run at them in early December, but Packers running away with that. When it comes to the NFC South, I, I again, I I don't see anybody challenging the Bucs. I don't. Carolina may sniff around for a little while, but not over the course of 17 weeks. So those are your division winners when it comes to the East, the North, the South, the West. It is a monster with the exception of the Seahawks. Who wins it when it's all said and done? Rams win it. Niners finish second. Cardinals finish third. And my other wild card's the Carolina Panthers. I like Baker Mayfield. I like Christian McCaffrey. I like what they've done there. I do. And they, look, they're not going to set the world on fire, but that's a 9-8 and eight football team, 10-7 and seven football team this year. In that division, two wins against the Falcons. Who knows what the Saints are going to give you? So when it's all said and done, the Rams are your one seed. I've got, you know, well, Matt Stafford's got some question marks. Yeah, they're just still loaded. Gang, they're just loaded. I've got the Rams going 13-4. and four. They're the one seed. When it's all said and done, I don't have the Rams even making the NFC Championship game. How about that for a wrinkle? Rams are the one seed. Packers are the two seed. Bucks are the three seed. Cowboys are the four seed. And then your three wild cards are the Niners, the Cards, and the Carolina Panthers. When it's all said and done, I like the Packers to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. How about that? So I've got the Green Bay Packers going to the Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. Just like what they've done this year. And their defense is going to be nasty. The defense is going to be nasty. And look, 
the lack of offense burned them. I I know that they've lost some on offense, uh, quite a bit on offense, actually. Aaron Rodgers gets over the hump this year. No distractions. No distractions. No COVID stuff. No, dr- no distractions. Packers. Take care of business. They're going to the Super Bowl. All right. Shuffling over to the AFC. Little NFL nuptials for you. AFC East. Bills are walking away with that. Bills best division, best record in the AFC. Bills the best record in football. Bills finished 14 and 3. Best record in football. Your other division winners. The Ravens. The Titans. The Chargers. The Chiefs' six-year streak of winning the AFC West comes to an end. One seeds the Bills, two seeds the Ravens. Three seeds, the Titans, four seeds, the Chargers. And look, the, the, the problem the Chargers have is they've got six games with the Raiders, the Chiefs, and the Broncos. So, look, I think you could end up having like a three-way tie at 10-7, and seven, but I think somebody's going to go 11-6 and six in this division. I do. So, Bills, Chargers, Ravens, Titans, your wildcard teams, Broncos, Chiefs, Patriots. Broncos, Chiefs, and Patriots. It's all said and done, like the Bills over the Titans, as they punch their ticket to the Super Bowl. So the Bills over the Titans, they're heading to the Super Bowl. In the NFC, I like the Packers over the Rams. I said they don't get to the NFC Championship game. I kind of jumped the gun on that. Packers over the Rams. Packers going back to the Super Bowl for the first time in over a decade. Packers, Bills in the Super Bowl. Going to get to who wins it coming up. Rogers Allen, a lot of fun, huh? My MVP is Justin Herbert. I think in that division, so many big games, so many big numbers. Patrick Mahomes, think about think about the offenses. Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, David Carr. Oh my gosh. Uh, good, good gracious. Derek Carr, I mean that offense, oh my God, the NF, ooh. The AFC West is loaded, so he's going to put up tons of numbers. I, I think when it's all said and done, you're going to have like 5,300 5, yards, 45 touchdowns, and 10 pick. Maybe even better than that. It's ridiculous. Justin Herbert wins the MVP. I have the Chargers winning that division. So, like I said, the Chargers are going to have a monstrous year. Well, he's going to win the MVP. Josh Allen's like the guy that everybody loves. And I get it. But I'm going to go with Justin Herbert. Defensive player of the year, I'm going to go with Michael Parsons. Dallas Cowboys. Guy is just a monster. And what he's been able to do, just, pff, good gracious, I'm impressed by him. So there you go. Uh, coach of the year, Brandon Staley, Chargers. It's kind of where, see where I'm going with this a little bit. But I don't have, when it's all of a sudden done, I got the, like I said, the Bills over the Titans and the Packers over the Rams. And I like the Bills. The Buffalo Bills to finally win the Super Bowl. Buffalo Bills are your Super Bowl champs. There are your NFL nuptials. You can get into the rookie of the year type of stuff. I, um, no idea. Because it's usually a running back. Find a running back on a team that is good. I, the, the, trying to land a rookie of the year, especially when it comes to like, you try, it usually goes to a quarterback. You find a quarterback on a team. What quarterback's going to start? You'd like to say Kenny Pickett, right, in Pittsburgh, but he's not going to be the starter out of the gate. I, if you're going to lean any way towards a rookie, that there's where you go just because – but once you finally get that that green lit, I don't know. You know. All right, there you go. Bills over the Packers in the Super Bowl. A little Big 12 big up. The Big 12 not only – let it be known that they're expanding or in the process of looking for expansions. They'll let you know where they're going. No, they could be lying. Commissioner could be lying. Sleight of hand. Looking west. Go west, young man. Go west. King of wishful thinking. That was go west, right? So look, as I look at this, there are markets where when the Big 12 goes down to 10 here in two years, and then... Or the Big 12's at 10 right now, aren't they? When they go down to 8 and they get back to 12 with the additions of BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF, they'll be back to 12. Well, going west means by no Memphis. It means like no Marshall. It means you can forget about 
USF. So where are they going? No SMU. You see, you, so Pac-12, beware. And people are like, well, I'd Utah. They don't need Utah. They got BYU. Why would you add Utah? Don't need them. Well, Colorado. I wrote Colorado, you know, Denver, medium market size. Denver's big enough. Denver's what, top 20 media market? 20, depending on TV, radio, depending on how you look at it. But this is all about TV. So Denver's right there on the cusp. If they're going west, the smart play for the Big 12 is what? If they're going west. The smart play for the Big 12 is Stanford, San Francisco, media market six, Phoenix, Arizona State. So if they go west, just from a media market standpoint, to make the, the Big 12 network worth something so you can financially compete again. It's not about how good the football programs are. It's about the market size that gets you television revenue. You need to get your hands on Stanford or Cal. You don't need them both, just need one. If they're a package deal, there's a package deal. Got to get, got to get your hands on San Francisco. Have to get your hands on that. So if you're looking at it from a media marketing standpoint, for the top 21 mark, for top 19 markets, 18 markets, Stanford's market six. What's Phoenix? Market 10, nine, Washington, Seattle. So you had Seattle, you had Phoenix, you had San Francisco, and then Denver. Now I know Colorado's in Boulder, but it still gets you the Denver market. And look, you can still kind of hold some of your roots. You get to bring one of your boys back. I don't, Colorado, I don't know what it's going to do for you football, basketball-wise. But if you want to do something, there you go. If you want to think outside the box here a little bit, you know, people mentioned Oregon. I, I get it. And Oregon would be, again, Portland is a top 25 market, but it's not the size of Denver. If you added Oregon instead of Colorado, if you went Oregon, Washington, Arizona State, Stanford, oh, okay. The curveball in all of this is UNLV. Because Vegas is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you're the Big 12 and you can add UNLV, all of a sudden now you have an inroads to Vegas. The Big 12 championship game can rotate between Houston and Vegas. You can really start to make this thing cool. Look what Dallas. I mean, you, you know who the heavy hitters are. Dallas would like to get their hands on the SEC one, but they're not going to. So, again, is the Big 12 says they're going west? The four schools, logically, when you think about it. When you just think about it logically. And you could do four divisions of four. Now you could go bigger. They could go six. They could be the first one to go to 18. If that's the case, they're going to 18. Then it's Stanford, Arizona State, Washington, Colorado, Oregon, and UNLV. UNLV is, to, to me, the wild card in all of this. They're the wild card in all of it. Because, they, you know, talk about adding strong institutions. Okay, but that's a marketplace. Stanford's the strongest one you can add. Academically, good in football, good in basketball. Um, uh, Arizona State it doesn't really give you anything. I mean, it gives you Phoenix, and Washington gives you a good football program in a good city. Oregon gives you branding. So we'll see what they do. If, from a sheer monetary standpoint, it's Stanford, Arizona State, Washington, Colorado, the the, the two that have to be a part of it are Washington and Stanford. Have to be a part of it. Because at least they give you brand recognition and a market size. You can get a, you see, you could get away with Arizona instead of Arizona State, although, you, see what I'm saying? You can get away with Oregon instead of Colorado, but the two that have to be a part of it are Washington, Stanford. And again, I threw UNLV there in the mix, but they're going after the Pac-12. The Big 12 basically told you they're going after the Pac-12. They're not going to add Boise State. They're not adding Utah State. They're not adding New Mexico. They're not doing things like that. Just not. I wanted to end with this. I think this is interesting. Um, you've heard me on the podcast talk about Aaron Judge, the Yankees. As Aaron Judge closes in on Roger Maris's Yankee single-season home run record. I was looking at Aaron Judge's numbers, and I thought, wait well, a second. I wonder how he compares to all-time Yankee greats. At the time of this podcast, he's got his double nickel. He's hit 55 home runs, right? Got 120 RBI. All right. What's his pace? Aaron Judge's pace is 64 home runs, 138 RBI, hit 300, 302. You know the 30 for 30? What if I told you? What if I told you that would even be one of the top 10 Yankee seasons of all time in terms of statistical prowess? Aaron Judge could go 64, 138, and 302. Babe Ruth has 
five seasons where he hit more than 52 home runs, drove in more than 160 runs. So Babe Ruth hit five or six home runs less, seven home runs left, drove in 25 more runs and hit 370. Babe Ruth's best season. This is to me the best season the Yankees ever had. Babe Ruth's best season, 59 home runs, 168 RBI and hit 378. So he's going to hit fewer home runs. He's going to drive in 30 more runs and hit 75 points higher. That's the best season. I think you make a case that's the best season anyone's ever had. 59, 168, 378. I mean, I know Bonds did, what, 71, 15, 370. Bonds put together a season like that once. Um, Gehrig, I have the second greatest season in Yankee history. 47, 173, 373. So Gehrig hit 47 home runs, which is about... 18 less than judge 173 RBI is going to drive in 40 more runs and hit 70 points higher. These guys are hitting 60 home runs, 50 home runs, driving in 170 runs and hitting 380, 370. Again, these are just their individual seasons. Ruth has what I go through and look, I went through and looked and Ruth had 10 seasons where he hit more than 45 home runs and drove in more than 140 runs. Babe Ruth had 10 seasons, more than 45 home runs, more than 140, 45 RBI, hit over 340. He's just on his own platform, baby. He's in his own world. Uh, The other great seasons that I found, Mickey Mantle, 52, 133, 53. Now that's comparable to what Judge is doing. Judge, 64, 138, 302. Mantle, 52, 130, 353. He's hitting 50 points higher, but he's going to hit a dozen less home runs and drive in, you know, fewer runs. So Judge is having a Mickey Mantle type of season. Judge's best season rivals Mickey Mantle's. It does not rival Ruth, and it does not rival Gehrig. Um, Also, Joe DiMaggio's best season, 46, 167, 346. 46, 167, and 346 is DiMaggio's. So when it's all said and done, Babe Ruth is going, or Aaron Judge is going to have the fourth best season name-wise. Right, Ruth's got the best season ever. Gary's got the next best in terms of name, like individual season. Now, if you start adding all of Ruth's seasons, like Ruth in twenty one, Ruth and or Garrig in thirty, Garrig in twenty seven, Garrig in thirty, then pff. the thing is, you take Aaron Judge's sixty four, one thirty eight, three hundred two. It's the greatest single season in half the league's teams. It's the greatest single season in Nationals history. It'd be the greatest single season in Marlins history. It'd be the greatest single season in Orioles history. It'd be the greatest single season. See where I'm going? It'd be the greatest single season in White Sox history. It wouldn't be the greatest single season in Cubs history because, you know, so so. Uh, it would be better than any season that Griffey had in Cincinnati. It'd be the greatest single season in Royals history. It wouldn't be the greatest single season in Red Sox history. You got Ted Williams and. David Ortiz and some of the things that were done there over the years. But you look up and down the ledger, it'd be the greatest season in Mets history. It'd be the greatest season in Rockies history. It'd be the greatest season in Diamondbacks history. See where we're going? So Aaron Judge's season is not even one of the top 10 individual statistical season in Yankees history. But for half the league, it would be the best that that sport team has ever had. How about that? Harp on Sports, the bar, podcast, media, audio, or radio network. Follow, share, like, subscribe at Harp on Sports Twitter, at Harp on Sports Instagram. You can be a part of it. Auditory Route, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Harp on Sports, the Facebook page, Harp on Sports, the YouTube channel, and of course, HarpOnSports.com, the big one today. It's all said and done. Super Bowl, NFL nuptials. The Packers knock off the Rams to go to the Super Bowl. The Bills. The Bills. It's just weird saying it. The Buffalo Bills are going to the Super Bowl. I know, I must be crazy, right? The Buffalo Bills are going to the Super Bowl. Uh, You know, the Chiefs run, it ends at six years. I'm a Chiefs fan, I enjoyed it, but they lost too much, and these other teams are ascending. So I think the Chiefs take a little bit of a step back. But how about that? Bills over the Titans. Bills over the Titans. Packers over the Rams. Bills over the Packers. Your MVP for the year is Justin Herbert. Defensive player of the year, Micah Parsons. There you go. Congratulations on the Super Bowl championship, Buffalo. Finally got there. Remember, stay clean, stay focused, stay strong. Frankenstein, have fun with your friends.